So you guys decided to blow this video up, so I figured, let's make a graphics engine. Since making the physics engine, I realized that DirectX is alright. It's not so evil like I thought, so we'll continue using it. And for all you losers who missed that video, DirectX is like a cheat code. It basically makes stuff easier for me. Also, a quick side note, why is this Wikipedia page different? Like, did Wikipedia actually go and change the layout? Oh my god, they did. Good for them. It's still sh** though. I first made a window open up after pressing this right here. And, uh, well, it's empty. Which is kind of expected since I haven't actually written anything. So the first step of making a graphics engine is, uh, obviously to render stuff on the screen. Uh, this should be pretty simple because I already did rendering in my physics engine and I should just be able to copy over the code, right? Oh, great. <laughs> Here's how it works. Uh, basically, I have two functions, one that will calculate the vertices and one that will calculate the indices. And uh, when I say calculate, I basically just have an array of vector free point. And each vector free point basically defines a point on the shape that I'm trying to render. Okay, so to keep it really simple, let's say we want to render like a, uh, a square on the... Oh. Let's say we want to render a square on the sh uh, on the screen. Um, a square is actually like basically two triangles, as you can see. So all we need to do is render two triangles, right? And to render that, uh, we need to render one triangle to begin with. And one triangle has three points, and those three points can be basically written as a vector. And then we basically just need three vectors, and we render it twice on the screen, and uh, yeah, we have a square. So 2D shapes are cool and all, but let's also render 3D shapes, which is basically the same thing, we just need more vector points. So instead of 6 for a square, we now have 24 for a cube, or 5 for a pyramid. The only problem we're facing right now is every time I want to render something to the screen, I have to manually write these vector points. And if I want to render something more complex, like this 3D model here, I would have to write hundreds if not thousands of these vector points which is super inefficient. And after a lot of vertex writing, here is a little cube I rendered. So next up, I decided to create an object loader, and by create, I meant I went online and downloaded one because somebody already made one. Uh, I, I still had to like hook it up, if you know what I mean, so technically I did some work there. Yeah. But anyways, we now can actually download 3D models, place them into a folder, and basically load them in and render those onto the screen. Which now makes me realize why didn't I just do this in the first place and load in a cube model instead of having to manually kind of work it out. Okay, so the next feature I implemented was textures. Currently, all I do is apply a gradient to a shape, but there is no actual files related to it. So I downloaded this DDS file loader and imported it into my project, which will basically load the textures in for me I then simply give it a texture pack and the variable reference that I want it linked to, and later on in the script I can use that variable reference and actually add it to my object, which in return basically just applies the texture. The next stage was writing my own shaders. Now, I don't know a lot about shaders, so I will just write the ones that don't seem too complicated. The first shader was transparency, and I know this technically isn't a shader, but it made sense to put it in this part of the video. We can accomplish transparency by creating a new blend state, and setting up these values to essentially decrease the opacity of a texture. We can then apply this blend state to any object and make it transparent. Shader number two is a sine wave shader, which basically applies a sine wave calculation onto the object to displace it. You can apply this to any axis, so it gives this cool wave going up and down effect. This sort of sine wave shader is typically used to create a wave effect in popular games, and it can be pretty handy. Shader number three is fog. For this, I created a new file that will apply fog calculations to every pixel and vertex, and in return create this foggy effect. It's also pretty cool because you get to change the colour and how foggy you want it to be, so I really like this one. I experimented with a few more shaders, like this texture displacement one, which basically just displaces the texture based on time, so it constantly does it. And boy does this make me sick. And I don't know what I was thinking, so let's forget about this one. Another thing I tried to implement was a sky dome, and once again, not really a shader, but oh well. Basically, I'm trying to apply a texture to the inside of a sphere that will encapsulate the entire scene. This is slightly annoying because the normal calculations are a little bit off, 
so the first few times I couldn't get the texture to fully sync up, but I eventually got it working. I was getting pretty sick of working on this, so as a final feature I decided to add terrain. This feature alone ended up being super annoying and long to implement, so you better like this video. And subscribe, you know. To create terrain, I started by creating a grid of planes. For this, I created a function that will automatically render them and place them in the correct position, as it would be too much work to do all of this manually. Next up, we need to give these planes some variety in height, so I downloaded a height map from the internet and wanted to apply it to these planes. This means that all the planes will change height based on the height map texture. The way this works is we grab a single vertex of the plane and add height to it based on the colour on the height map texture, white being the highest point and black being the lowest. We can repeat this process over and over again to the entire grid of planes and we end up with something like this. Next up, I needed to add textures to this entire thing because currently it was just a singular colour. Now this wasn't working for me for such a long time and I really didn't know why. But I eventually got it working, I still don't know how, but anyway, this is what it looks like. It's still a bit janky, but it actually looks okay. So this is the final result of my engine. Is it efficient, neat and amazing? Absolutely not, it's a mess. Did I learn something? Well, kind of. And was it worth it? No.